Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is Greg Patan. I'm in his beautiful loft in New York City. And uh, Greg's reviewing uh, this pretty amazing speaker, this PBN speaker. What is, what is the model? The model is the <laughs> M2 exclamation point yeah. five. Oh, that rolls right off the top. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So it's uh, basically, it's got this JBL horn on top mm -hmm. and then behind the grill, uh, there were two 15 inch two 15 inch drivers right. exactly but those drivers Inside. aren't JBLs that they, they are JBLs they are well. JBLs. yes JBLs. yes okay uh, it's too bad I can't get really behind the speaker because it's kind of dark back there and I'm gonna oh, trip and stuff because you, I'm just telling the people oh, maybe okay. I'll take a picture or something yeah you should that absolutely that, that get a you shot can of see it. the crossover back there and it's just beautiful it's yeah, like it's, a piece of art it's really cool Greg, Greg is, is an artist uh, yeah. and I will link to his website but uh, the back of the speaker is a piece of art. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about the system sure. we just heard. So it's a VPI table, obviously. Yes, yeah, the Avenger reference. Okay. Their, their latest uh, rim drive uh, table. Okay. And what's the cartridge? Uh, the cartridge is an Ortofon uh, Thai uh, anniversary okay. cartridge. So it's all a titanium bodied cartridge. Okay. Yeah. And then the preamp is this D'Agostino? Yeah, the D'Agostino Momentum uh, preamp. Yep, stereo preamp. Right, right. And then the amps, there's two, two pass labs. The uh, pass labs are the XA 200.5 model blocks. Right. And the Boulder phono, phono yeah. stage, that's yeah. a new piece. The, oh, yeah. The, the cool. 508, yeah. yeah, it's a really cool piece. It's, uh, it's an amazing system because, you know, um, we were talking before we started, and I was telling you that I have a thing now about big speakers with 15-inch woofers, and this is like, yes, <laughs> this is what I, 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 it's just because, especially in a, in a space as big as yours, you need a big speaker. I mean, I don't care how good, uh, you know, a two-way speaker is, a, st a small stand mount speaker, it ain't going to cut it in, a, in this room. It's, it's just too much air. It's really not fair to ask uh, a small speaker to... Uh, to drive this room effectively, yeah. it can sound good, yeah. um, but you <clears throat> you quickly find um, the speaker's limit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, you you hit that point where you know you, it's just not going to lock into the room right. uh, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, headroom, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, dynamic just, headroom. Yeah. Just drive right. and efficiency. I mean, obviously. Um, uh, I mean, with 200 watt pass labs, it's not like you don't have power, but you Plenty know. Plenty power. The yeah. thing is, I've found even with sensitive speakers, like I'm reviewing these Klipsch Fortes, and when I go from the 18 watt pass la uh, first watt uh, SIT3 right, to a right. bigger amp, even though the speakers are 99 dB efficient, in terms of really dynamic material, it sounds better with more. You power. are. 100% right on that, and most manufacturers would uh, at least agree off the record that that is that is the case. I mean, it sounds I've, nice. I, I found the exact same thing. Yeah, it, it sounds it, nice with the with the SIT with 18 watts. Yeah, no, but it, I mean, it sounds good. it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't let the speakers' dynamics really bloom. Right, right. I they're find, there, but yeah. they're kind of held back slightly. Absolutely. There's no there's no question that there's, for me at least uh, I like. Um, uh, powerful amplifiers. I've, I've not lived with a low-powered amplifier um, that I've really enjoyed. But you, and you live with very sensitive speakers. And I have, yeah, my, my launches right now that are being worked on uh -huh. um, are 90, I think like 98 dB efficient uh -huh. with powered subwoofers built uh -huh. in. Uh -huh. And even in that setup, uh -huh. uh, they love powerful amplifiers. Interesting. They just, yeah, they just sound much better with them. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I mean, I guess it depends if, if you're the kind of person. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, the musical that, taste that, too. No, that listens to, to quieter it. music. Right. And you have a very efficient speaker and you have an 18 watt amplifier. It, it sounds lovely. I'm Absolutely. not saying it doesn't sound yeah. good. No, you can. No, there's a place for everything, and and musical tastes have a lot to do with that. And of course, you know the amount of air that you're asking right. the the speaker to to drive has a lot to do with that. Because I think when I was listening, I was back there, so I was a good twenty more than twenty feet from the speakers when I was yeah, you were about couch, twenty feet. Right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's the thing. So I I, I guess. Well, the thing that really grabbed me, we played a Jeff Beck record, but the, the, the record that really grabbed me was that um, Duke Ellington Mood Indigo. Yeah. And it was so, 
real. Uh, it was so scaled like real life. And the dynamics of each instrument of the brass and the drums and yeah, the piano, yeah. it just seemed, what, it was like, wow, <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps now thinking about <laughs> that I was had goosebumps when I was listening to it. It was so incredible. It's like that thing of, of, of like crossing over to some kind of zone where you're like, I'm there, well, Duke, I, the band I in think the Columbia 30th Street. It's we incredible. Talk, yeah, we, had, we, we talked about, you know, I think last time that we chatted, um, you know, the different elements of, of playback that that give you a sense of being there, right? Mm -hmm. And scale is just one of those mm -hmm. elements. Mm -hmm. And having basically no sidewalls, right. sidewall reflections, right, right, right. no real ceiling reflections. You're right. basically playing these kind of in a free air right. um, yeah, environment. Yeah, because they're really high ceilings. They're like 10 feet at least. No, right? like 14, close 14 to 14. Feet. Yeah, 13, yeah. 13 wow. and then half, something like that. Wow. Uh, and you're, <clears throat> um, you know, you're, you're giving a speaker like this with, you know, with, with the 15 inch drivers, you know, and this very efficient horn, uh, mid range and, and, and tweeter to just, you know, to just open up and mm -hmm. it, it becomes very, um, uh, a great deal of ease and that mm -hmm. scale, mm -hmm. that the sense of scale really is great in this room. And these speakers really do it very, very well. They're, um, as you just said, you were getting kind of goosebumps just, yeah. just <laughs> thinking about just, it. Yeah, just yeah, I was thinking about it. So um, I, I really, really do like these a lot, uh, and um, I'm very close to kind of finishing the review. Uh, so then, when when will that be? Do you have an idea um, when? No, not really a deadline. I'm kind of stretching it out a little okay. bit. Just so. You're enjoying yourself. That's always a good thing. <laughs> just so I can hold on to them just a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm not in any real hurry to get them back. Uh, my, you know, my wife absolutely loves them. They're wow. ph phenomenal for movies. Yeah. You know, we watched, uh, we started watching you know, Game of Thrones from oh, you know, yeah. the first Horns episode. Oh yeah, movies? And, yeah, no, I mean, they, they, it sounds Oh yeah, so that's fantastic. a projection screen? Yeah, that's our screen. That's we a have screen our, that rolls We have a little projector out. up okay. there. And, um, but uh, uh, I think it's the, you know, um, the sense of scale and the ease, and we talked about it just a few minutes ago, the, the dynamic envelope for each, instrument is, let's say you have 10 instruments playing on a recording, a good recording here, these speakers kind of allow each instrument's dynamic envelope to bloom and you know, contract and expand. Right. On its own. On its own, separate right. from the other instruments. Yeah. So no matter yeah, what yeah. this instrument's doing over here, this one is not affected right. or limited by the speaker. That, right. that kind of gives you that homogenized, kind of flattened out right. dynamic. So you have things kind of popping in and out yeah. all the time, which you know kind of gives you a sense of excitement and a sense yeah. of you know wonder of, of the recording. And you know we heard that just now with the SDV Wonder we were listening to. Yeah, you were talking you about know. the electric bass. Remember on that track? Oh yeah, well, when the bass came in, I was yeah. like, I know, <laughs> I might be wrong, of course, right. but I, I had a pretty good feeling. I knew exactly what he was playing and the kind uh -huh. of strings he was using and all that kind of stuff. And and uh, but even like when the when the chorus when the women came in um, singing on Sir Duke. Yeah, yeah, it was just, you know, just, you know, like, it, it's, it's like that, li like, it's happening live kind of feeling. Yeah. Um, which is, which is really kind of what we, we're all kind of chasing after, right. I think. It's a, that's and of course, a on that track it. on Sir Duke, um, Stevie Wonder's vocal is just so joyful. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's just incredible how he's yeah. just, you just feel it through the speakers. It really comes, it really comes through. I think one of the conclusions that I, have drawn already is that this this speaker <clears throat> to a greater or lesser degree depending on how you look at it mm. uh, limits or does not limit or allows recording to do more of what it does mm -hmm. um, than just about any speaker I've had in here yeah. and most of them that I, I tend and to hear each out recording there. of the few that we played we, we started with the Jeff Beck they all right. sound completely different totally different Totally different. Totally that's, different. That's a bullseye right Yeah, there. it's they great. They should all, because they were all are different. <laughs> great level of neutrality. And it's not for the, um, at least at first listen, it wouldn't be for the kind of, uh, you know, pinpoint accuracy crowd, you know, the people that just get off on, you know, like really sh hyper sharp outlines mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know, super fast accentuated mm -hmm. transients, treble, right. you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's more effortless than that. It's more effortless than that. And yeah. it's, it happens more the way you hear, you know, kind of a live instrument. And when, right. you know, someone plays our piano over here, um, 
this speaker reproduces the piano uh, in a way um, that you, I rarely hear, and it's it's in the way it lets the upper harmonics just kind of fly. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have the fundamental, and then you have the harmonic that kind of rings out mm -hmm. in, into decay, mm -hmm. and it just, no matter what's going on around it, that note continues to fade mm -hmm. while other speakers will have, you know, choked it off or flattened it out or mm -hmm. got it lost in, you know, some kind of driver and So when you've listened uh, at, at much choir levels uh, at, for late night stuff and it holds up? Uh, oh, I mean... You're into loud. I, 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 I sense that. I'm into loud only because this room does have a very high noise, noise floor. It, it, it's not a choir room. Oh, come to my house. <laughs> I'm sure they're worse, but, you know, I've got, uh, I've got you know, uh, four, you know, eight by 12 foot windows over here that look out onto one of the busiest streets in the world. So, uh -huh. you know, I'm only four floors above that. So Broadway's always kicking a ton of noise up in here. And, and uh, so I tend to, I tend to play a bit louder than, than most people. And I listen to a lot of rock and electric jazz and stuff. So um, I do tend to listen a bit louder, but. And you play, right? You play an instrument? I play guitar okay. a little bit. Well, that's yeah. an instrument. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but I, have, I haven't stumbled across any, you know, these speakers are, are not at all music dependent. Mm. You're not gonna go, oh, I, you know, I, I played opera on this one and they sounded so much better. Like that's just mm. not gonna happen when you're, when you're listening to these. Uh, they, they will at least, um, in my opinion, sound better than most speakers that okay. you'll come across. <laughs> and it, you know, they're $30,000 a pair, so they're not cheap, but when you start looking at other $30,000 speakers, I mean, you're not looking at two 15 inch drivers right. per side, right? I mean, that's, that rarely happens at that price. And to make it work and, you know, to get them to blend in with right. the- uh, And the cabinet's beautiful. And, and the cabinet's beautifully made. Uh, Peter does just it's extraordinary- seems, How much did you say this thing weighs? These are 285 pounds a side. Yeah. <laughs> right? Serious, yeah. That's why you have such big muscles. Well, that's why my shoulders throw out. I was why yeah. that is. And, and since I can see your other speaker, so yeah. your Sunny speaker back there is which one is that? Yeah, that's a Sunny uh, Majestic 15 uh -huh. um, that has a one 15-inch driver uh, per side. Um, don't sound too much unlike like a lot of the strengths that the the PBNs have. Uh, the Sunnies also have, but um, I find that they don't. The drivers aren't as seamlessly blended uh -huh. as as Peter has achieved with these. Mm. Um, uh, this is cool. Yeah, I think yeah. we've done it. Right. Are you got anything else? No, I think we're good. Thanks. So. <laughs> anyway. All right, man. Well, thank you very much. Great. Thanks, for, thanks, thanks so much by. for having me in your home. Sure, my pleasure. Absolutely. Anytime. And, um, Anytime. I will link back. I think. I think I did. I think I put that on this YouTube channel, or your first video. I think that was a really first early one. one. First one's still out there somewhere. Somewhere yeah. <laughs> in the universe. Anyway, thanks again, Greg. My Thank name you. is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show coming to you from Greg's beautiful loft space in New York City. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you again real soon.